Go ahead. Ready, go for it. Okay, today we're going to be talking about first the purposes of money, second competing theories of origin of money, and lastly how that relates to current currency issues. To begin, there are three functions to which money serves. Number one, as a medium of exchange, number two, as a store of value, and three, as a unit of account. To explain each of these, as a medium of exchange, money must be easily tradable. That's why things such as trees aren't good currency. You can't exchange that readily and easily. Secondly, as a store of value, you don't want money that degrades over time. You don't. You can't use necessarily something such as fruit or vegetables as money because it degrades. It will erode in value over time. It won't carry over from one user to the next. And lastly, as a unit of account, you want something that is consistently quantifiable. It has the same worth from person to person and is divisible. Talking about the private or public origin of money, you've got two competing theories. The first is from Austrian economist Karl Merger. Merger believed that there is a private origin in money, necessarily that when you go from subsistence farming to specialization, you have the issue of bartering, and bartering is simply a pain. You have to go around looking for someone who wants what you have and has what you want. So, you develop something that is money. It must be portable, durable, and a term that he coined, saleable. And saleable simply means that it can be divisible. You can divide it and have fractions of amounts and necessarily get exact quantities for the goods that you want. The competing theory for this is developed by Charles Goodhart of the London School of Economics. He states that there is a public origin to money, simply talking about cardless theory. Now, what he talks about is the coinage of money. Relative to any sort of informal currency, coinage is something unique. When you have raw metals, it's hard to value something like that, such as a as opposed to a bag of salt or cattle or something else that you can see worth it readily. But what he talks about is the fiscal incentive of a, of a country to develop money. First, you can start measuring expenditures and you can start measuring income. Therefore, both become taxable. Then, once those are taxable, you can make it so that money is the only thing with which you can pay off those taxes, creating an instant demand for that money. You've developed worth for that which you've just created. And then you have the issue of senior rich, which is the difference between cost of producing and the actual worth of money itself. But that just goes on to show that there could be a public origin as opposed to Karl Merger's theory. So going on to the relevance of current currency, how does this relate? The world's reserve currency is not mandated by government. It's mandated by firms and several countries as to what they're going to use in international and inter interrelated interdependent markets. So currently, that currency is the U.S. dollar, and that is dependent upon how it fits the three criteria of the functions of money. But if you look at the alternatives, you've got the Chinese yuan. The issues with the Chinese yuan is it's not widely accepted outside of China, so that fails the test of how tradable is it, how easily you can use it with other people or countries outside of China. And secondly, you have the issue of high inflation. It's not the best store of value. Because it doesn't store its value well, then you have that issue of instability in that currency. The other competing currency is that of the euro, which is an interesting case. It has neither private nor cardless origin, stating that it doesn't have its origin in a nation state whatsoever, nor simply through the coming about of market means. It's developed by the European Union. And as such, it has a lack and a solid foundation of power, not saying that the EU is unstable, ignoring the fact that the current economic climate but overall, it is not something that we've seen previously. So international markets aren't readily available to accept it as a currency outside of Europe itself or members of the EU. So what does that mean to everyone here today? Necessarily, that comes to the point that the US dollar is safe as an international currency. Thank you. All right.